So, have you ever dreamed of creating your own video game using Godot, but thought it was too complicated and that there were just too many nodes to wrap your head around? Well, buckle up, cause in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of over 60 of the most useful Godot nodes in only 6 minutes, so that you have everything you need to kickstart your Godot journey. Now, of course, this tutorial won't be an in-depth explanation of each node, but if you want more details, check out the completely free cheat sheet I put in the description of this video. It took me quite a few hours to make, but in here I tried to summarize what each of those 60 most useful nodes are and why you'd want to use them in a good game. And again, it's completely free, so don't hesitate to check it out and share it with your friends if they're into that kind of stuff. Alright, and now without further ado, let's explore the 60 most useful good nodes. First of all, the node is the base object in a Godot scene. It can be specialized as a node 3D if you want it to have a 3D position, a node 2D if you want it to be 2D, or a control if you want it to be included in your game UI. To visualize stuff in 2D, you have the sprites 2D and animated sprites 2D nodes that allow you to display an image or a frame-by-frame -frame animation made of images. Or you can also use a polygon 2D if you feel like drawing the shape yourself in the engine using a set of points. If you have a workflow with a tilesheet image, then you can turn it into a tileset resource and then use that inside a tile map in your 2D levels to quickly design your terrain. In 3D, well, you'll mostly use the Mesh Instance 3D to display your 3D models. It allows you to display either primitive shapes or your own 3D models. There's also something called a grid map, which is a bit akin to tile maps, but in 3D, for block-based level design. Then, to actually render your scene, you'll need to use a camera 2D or a camera 3D. Note that the camera is required for a 3D scene, but optional for 2D. In that case, it simply gives you more control on the game view. Similarly, a 3D scene will require that you put at least one light in it, for example, a directional light 3D or an omni-light 3D, so a point light source, but their equivalents in 2D, directional light 2D and point light 2D aren't mandatory for your scene to be visible. Again, they're just a way to customize your visuals further, typically with shadows. And you also have a 2D cross 3D node called Environment to easily define your scene and rendering settings. Another super important category of nodes is all the ones related to physics. So basically, for both 2D and 3D, Godot offers the following. The areas are trigger zones that can detect other physical bodies or areas and emit events when they enter or exit. The static bodies are bodies that detect collisions but don't respond to them, so they won't move but they can block other physical objects, which is why they're typically used for environment props. The rigid bodies are auto-moved using physical forces and are thus subjected to gravity by default, so you don't move their positions directly but you instead apply impulses and forces on them. Finally, the character bodies are moved via code, but they have a lot of nice methods readily available to simplify this movement implementation, and they can auto-detect collisions. For all those nodes to work, you'll also need to give them a physical shape by creating a collision shape 2D or 3D node inside as a child of your body or area node. This physics system also has the Raycast 2D and 3D nodes that allow you to send a ray of a given length from a given point in your scene to detect physical objects. A somewhat related topic is that of navigation. In Godot, you have built-in nav utilities that are really cool, and that allow you to define navigation regions and navigation agents both in 2D and in 3D. In terms of UI, Godot relies on a system of nested containers. That's pretty common. It's a way to auto-place your children in a hierarchy in a responsive way. So for example, you have the HBox container, the VBox container, and Grid container that align UI elements in rows, columns, or grids. You have the Margin container that can add some padding, and the Panel container that allows you to style the wrapper around your elements. For the elements themselves, there's quite a list available, but you'll most often use the Labels to display text, the Texture X to display images, the Color X to create solid color rectangles, all the buttons to create interactable elements with a label and or an icon. And by the way, you can also use a sub-viewport along with a sub-viewport container to display multiple camera renders on your screen, and create mini-maps or split-screens, for example. 
Okay, we're almost there, but to wrap up this quick overview, here are also some miscellaneous useful node types. For example, if you want to control the movement of your nodes precisely over time, you actually have a few possibilities. You can either use a skeleton 2D or 3D to rig your object and then animate those bones, or you can directly use the animation player node to control virtually any property on any node in the same scene, or you can go further with an animation tree that allows you to blend multiple animations defined in an animation player in a clever way, or you can use path and path for the nodes to move your objects along a user-defined curve. To play sounds, you have three types of audio stream player nodes, with or without specialization. To create nice VFX and give some juiciness to your games, you can use the CPU particles or the GPU particles. GPU particles are of course more efficient, but they won't work on any platform. And finally, the timer is a quick way to create a countdown that either repeats or is just a one-shot. Alright, that was pretty intense. But you should now have a basic idea of what nodes you need to use to make your first Godot games. Remember that if you want, there's a free cheat sheet of all the nodes we covered today available in the description. And if you want to go deeper, you might want to check out those short 1-minute tutorials I made or those more in-depth dives into the Godot game engine. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe to get more game creation content. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.